To demonstrate the widget, I have prepared a survey layer and uh, let's check the attributes that I've put in the layer. If you go to the layer properties, information here, you see it has a FID, date and the date time, notes, photo, observer, server number, land cover, crop type, water source, irrigation type, cover and fence. And note the different data types that are used here. Now let's go to the Attributes Form tab to set up the widgets. You can change it here to drag and drop designer to have some more flexibility. I remove the FID, though it was already hidden. And I'm going to reorder here the fields. This determines the order of the field form. And with the plus button, I can add a tab. So let's make it tab info. And drag it to the top. And under that tab, later I will group all the general information. And I create another tab with the plus button called land cover, which contains all the land cover information. Maybe later I will need to shuffle things, so I'm not going to group them yet into the tabs. And now I'm going to configure each field with a widget. And let's start with the observation number. At alias, you can rename the field name to something more human readable. And the widget type in this case is range. And I keep the subtype as uh, editable. And this will result in a widget where I can, with plus and minuses, uh, increase the integer number. And it has to start at minimum of 1. cannot be null, and I want to enforce the not null constraint. And it should also be a unique number, because we want a unique ID for each observation. And I can add any expression to uh, the widget. And here I use the expression that observation number should be larger or equal to 1, and I can give a description of this expression. And you will see this also back in uh, the mobile device. For observer, I use the alias surveyor. For widget type, I keep text edit, which will just be an open edit field. Also, that one should not be null. I would like to see the name of the surveyor for each observation. It doesn't have to be unique, but I can use a default value here, and there's a nice uh, variable, merging username. So by default, it will use the merging username on your mobile device and fills this in for the surveyor. Then we go to the date widget. Give us alias date and time. And I change here the display format to custom because I would like to have a different notation. If you click that help button, you will see here a lot of explanation of how to customize the display format of the date. I'll demonstrate it here. So for the year, month and day, I want to start with the day number. Then instead of a dash, I use a slash. If I use MM, I see the month number, MMM a short month, and MMMM the full month name, but here I just want the number. So this is how I can uh, customize the display format. You can override the field format, but this is only useful if you don't have the date field in the date data type. So in this case, we don't need to do that because my date field is in the date data type, as you can see here also from the icon in the available widgets panel. Also, I don't want this to be null and enforce the not null constraint. And to make it easy for the surveyor, I use here the now function, which will use the current date and time. I don't check the box apply default value on update because then every time you make a correction to the observation, it will also update the date to now. 
uh, but I want to keep the original date of the observation. For photo, we make sure that the widget type is attachment, storage type select existing file, and the path should be a relative path to the project, and use the integrated image viewer. And if you keep width and height on auto, it will scale with the size of your uh, mobile device or uh, the attribute table in QGIS. Next, I want a notes field just for open notes to be taken and use a text edit multi line so you can type a bit more than in the normal uh, widget. Then, in the land cover, I use the alias land cover class and I want a drop down menu. So, for drop down menus, you can use value map and then value will be stored in the attribute table and description is what the user can choose from a drop down menu. You can also load this from a layer or from a CSV file. Now, because this is a survey for a land cover, this should not be null and it should be enforced not to be null. Then for crop type, I use the alias crop type and here I'm going to use also a drop down but not a value map but I'm going to create a value relation uh, in this way I can link to another uh, non-geographic table and the advantage is that I can extend the crop types uh, always separate from the main survey layer. So let's click OK to close this dialog and create that layer. Go to Layer, Create Layer, New Geo Package Layer. And make sure you save this in the same folder that you're going to synchronize with Mergin. I call this one Crop Types. You can change the table name if necessary. And it should have no geometry. And I just add only one field called crops and add it to the field list. Now I can edit this attribute table. And here I can add rows and I'm going to add all the crops. And later I can extend this or remove crops. And then that's easy because it's separate from the main survey attribute table. So under the widget type, I choose the layer crop types, key column FID, value column crops, and I want this only when the land cover is crop type. So I'm going to put a constraint expression there. Land cover equals cropland. Make sure you type the class exactly as it was written under land cover. It's case sensitive. And you can put a description here, which will also be made visible in the mobile device if the constraint is not met. Don't check the box to enforce the expression constraint, otherwise uh, this needs to be always valid. However, check the box allow multiple selections if you want to have multiple crop types selected, which is useful for intercropping. So for water source, I use the alias water source. I want a simple drop down with the value map. And there are typed different types of water sources. And I need to have an expression constraint that land cover should be cropland. Note that here I made a little mistake with uh, the case of cropland, which should be capital. But I've corrected that later. So always be careful, this is case sensitive. So for irrigation type, I use the alias irrigation type. Again, a value map for creating a drop down. And here I add the different irrigation types. 
Remember that the value field will be stored in the attribute table and the description is what is shown to the user. So you can vary this. And in this case, I want an expression for the restriction, what the source equals, and then check how it was exactly called, irrigated. And add the description that this is only for irrigated parcels. And the cover, change the alias to vegetation cover. In this case, use a range. And it would be nice to have a slider. So instead of editable, I'm going to use a slider. The dial is not supported. I want a minimum of 0% and a maximum of 100%. It's visual estimation, so a step size of 5% would be fine. And I use a suffix here, percentage, which will also be shown on the mobile device. And fence is a Boolean type, and then automatically the widget type is set to checkbox. And then true or false will be uh, stored. If you have the data type as string and you use checkbox, you can also store uh, any text uh, that you put there under checked state and unchecked state. But here we'll just use true and false. And as an alias, I use a question, is the parcel fenced? So now we can select all the fields and drag them into the tab where we want them. So now we have the info and the land cover tab with the different fields under it. Let's test our form by editing the survey layer and adding a feature. Here we see the two tabs. And let's see if the restrictions work. If I choose cropland, the others become active. If I choose irrigated, I can choose an irrigation type. And the slider and the checkbox are there. I would like to add two more uh, features of uh, merging maps. That is uh, the ability to scan QR codes. So you just need to create a field QR code with data type string. Click OK. And another nice feature is to add a hyperlink. So I add a field called link and that should also be a string. Toggle off the editing and click save. I'm going to add a new tab. So I call this one links. And I select QR code and drag it to links and a link. And then I drag both of them to links. So they are under the tab. For QR code, I don't need to um, set anything except the alias. So as an alias, I say scan the QR code. And for link, I need to change text edit to multi-line HTML. And then I can add a hyperlink in HTML format uh, under default value. So here I'm creating a hyperlink to the documentation of merging maps where it describes how to add hyperlinks. And the text to be linked is called help. And this all should be in quotes because it's a string. And then there in the preview, you see hyperlink help. Now on that help page, there's another very nice example that you can uh, link to uh, Google Maps to use it for navigation. So under alias, I change the name to navigate. And I paste here the uh, example which then says open Google map and it will put your uh, coordinate in Google map. So you can use that for further navigation. And that's very useful. Let's test this. Here there's the links tab and there's scan QR code, which doesn't look interesting at the moment, but on the mobile device, you will see there the QR scanner of your mobile device. The last thing that I want to show is how to set the uh, preview on the mobile device. And there we use on the layer properties display. And I can choose here to show the observation number. 
and then under the HTML map tip, use hashtag image. And there we're going to refer to the photo file name. And you need to add here a variable. Which is the project folder. And you see there in the preview where that is. Use insert to add it there. You'll see there in the square brackets uh, the expression being added. Need another expression for the file name. And that is stored in the photo field. So under fields and values, you find photo. Just double click. OK. And then insert. This should then point to the path of your picture and show a preview in the mobile device. So let's save the project and synchronize with the cloud so we can have a look at our mobile device. It gives a little warning here because I've started with a sample project which I've heavily modified, but that doesn't affect the result. On the mobile device in the Merging Maps app, download this project and it's just indoor, so uh, just for the example of uh, testing the form, I'm going to add a point here. So at the top, you can see the three tabs, Info, Land Cover, and Links. Under Info, there I can fill in the observation number, just using the plus there, and it's a unique number. Surveyor is filled in automatically, date and time. I can take a picture. Just one here in the office. And I can take some notes. Then I go to the land cover tab. And there it tells me to really fill in this uh, land cover. If I choose tree cover, I see warnings that I can't fill in all the crop information. If I choose cropland, I can use here, because of the value relation, multiple crops, which is useful if you have intercropping, for example, with multiple crops per parcel. If I choose rain fed, I'm uh, warranted I cannot fill in the irrigation type. But if I choose irrigation, of course, I can then choose the irrigation type. After collecting the points, I synchronize. And then back in QGIS, I synchronize. And check the result in the attribute table. And there's the result in the form view. And also here you can see the tabs. If I go to the table view, you can also see what it does with the value relation. It puts those uh, curly brackets and then with uh, the chosen classes. So now you've learned all the tips and tricks of widgets and how to use them in Mergent Maps.